so welcome to where is quite frankly my favorite spot here in Hong Kong for landscape photography, Lantau Island. But I do have a love-hate relationship with this area because it can generate its own weather and take you out of expectations from the weather forecast. So a lot of the photos that I've wanted to capture from this spot and share with all of you has eluded me for quite some time now, until today. I have an ambitious plan for the day because of a typhoon forecast in the coming week and I was hopeful it will give us some fiery skies to the days leading up to it and thought why not walk you through my on location photography process while we're at it and the first one is about having a plan or an idea of what you want to photograph for the day so i did say that the main idea for today was to take the epic sunset but i also wanted to push my luck a little bit further until nighttime because two days ago there was this planetary alignment with the moon venus and mars forming a triangle in the night sky completely missed that but i think for today i can still capture those three celestial bodies in the night sky with the lantel peak as my main subject in the frame so I think it might be a photograph worth taking and then if the clear night sky persists for longer then maybe I can also do some Milky Way photography because this spot here in Hong Kong is relatively away from the light pollution making it a Bortel class 5 so it's quite acceptable for astrophotography as I had a lot of time before sunset I took my time with the hike and admired the open views of the sea and landscapes until I found a spot to share a composition aspect I enjoy adding in my photos so i found that nice spot over there to do a self-portrait shot which i tend to use in my landscape photography to give a sense of scale in my photos so you see how prominent the lantel peak mountain will be in the background and then adding a human figure within the surroundings just gives it a lot more perspective in the photo and it's also a way for me to capture the memories of the places that i've been to after taking what would be a good thumbnail for this video i ate my snack that's surprisingly not mcdonald's chicken and mushroom wrap and pushed forward then was sparked with an interesting conversation so i just got asked a while ago by the other hikers how i'm surviving a steep three hour hike here in hong kong in the summer heat with my 15 kilo backpack and i just gotta say it takes a certain level of dedication to photography and that's why landscape photographers great in relationships dedicated focuses on the right things and we last long jokes aside carrying a lot of gear on steep long hikes is a physically challenging task but carefully selecting what to carry and finding that balance that works can give you more options of what to capture on the field and could be worth the effort sometimes Okay, so while waiting for the golden hour, I wanted to talk to you about the camera modes that I'm using when I'm out doing photography. So you see these dials on your cameras. Basically in photography, I only focus on the two letters. The first one is going to be the M mode, which is probably what every guide out there will tell you to shoot at. It's going to be the gold standard for the chosen ones who understand exposure triangle. And it's going to be the manual mode. And manual mode gives you the full control over your camera settings and exposure from the shutter speed, the ISO and aperture. But because I am Asian, I only go for ACE, which makes me completely average. And I shoot in aperture priority, which allows me full control over the aperture setting. And then the camera will recalculate the appropriate amount of shutter speed for a given exposure, which I think is a lot more efficient because for landscape photography, I tend not to focus too much on my shutter speed unless I'm using some form of long exposure for seascapes, waterfalls, or astrophotography. And in those cases, I will use manual mode. But maybe 70 or 80% of the time I use aperture priority completely works fine for me so I think shooting 100% in manual mode is not completely necessary but you should do what works best in your workflow this shot I'm about to take is a classic composition with the repeated layers in landscape and the trail leading your eyes towards the second highest mountain in Hong Kong called Lantau Peak okay so I think it's about approaching golden hour now so we gotta find ourselves the composition at this point I was feeling optimistic about my sunset shot I mean just look at that scene just look at that cool looking cloud circling around Lantau Peak. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And I'm just quite excited to be able to share this with all of you. And if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd appreciate if you can like and subscribe so that this video can spread to more people. But for now, we have to set up our shot and walk you through the composition process. My composition workflow is going to be split into maybe three or four main considerations. The first one is whether I want a wide shot or a telephoto shot. And that will determine the lens that I'm going to bring for that outing or the lens that I will be shooting at. So I think for a scene like this, it's going to be better using a wider shot so that's why I'm using a 24 to 70 standard zoom lens which I think 24 is going to be wide enough for this frame so the second consideration is when I'm out on location I try to assess the scene and then try to identify what 
pulls me in to a greater degree or what really draws my attention that scene. So for example like this, it's going to be Lanteo Peak. It's a no-brainer, it's the most prominent thing in the background. It's going to be the subject that I want to work with today. And the third one is I don't really think about all the compositional rules so much, like the rule of thirds. What I try to achieve in my photos is to have a sense of balance. So for example, in this composition that I'm working right now, I'm putting Lanteo Peak on the left-hand side of the frame and I know it looks like I'm just using the rule of thirds right now but there's more to the thought process behind it. So as you can see on the right hand side of the frame there's going to be the settings on and then you also have the sweeping landscapes on the right hand side. Then that's why I'm putting the Lantel Peak in the left hand side of the frame to have like a counterbalance. So for example if I move Lantel Peak to the center of the frame then the left part of the image is going to be a bit empty. If there's something appearing in one side of the frame then I need to have something of opposing weight in the other side of the frame as well. And the last consideration I make is just the supporting elements and cleanup, which I try to find different patterns like leading lines or color contrast in the frame to add a bit more visual flow and act as an aid for the viewer is to move around the entire frame and not just focus on one part. After accomplishing a decent sunset shot for my mission, we still have the nighttime shots to take, but suddenly this happens. So suddenly I have zero visibility. What the hell? And while everyone decided to call it a day, I noticed that there were breaks in the cloud from time to time, so I persisted and waited it out until night time. The view is now visible and I was able to take a few portraits of myself within the foreground and then the background is going to be the silhouette of the Lantau Peak with the moon and I think that's going to be Venus in the night sky and I'm still quite satisfied with the shots considering the conditions that I was provided today. This turned out to be what I thought was <laughs> one hell of a shot. Totally love the blue and orange color contrast with a fog layer adding more atmosphere to the landscape and a second mission accomplished for the day. As true night approached, it had zero visibility once more and I felt defeated about perhaps not being able to capture the Milky Way mission. So actually I can see the Milky Way over there. There's some clear patches of sky over here but there's nothing in this direction. It's just open water and I don't think the photo will look nice even if I took it now. Um, if I wait maybe like three hours the so Milky Way is going to move to the horizon over in this side and I can use this path as a leading line but I don't think it's going to be worth the three hour wait and it's not a satisfying photo. I eventually decided to just snap the Milky Way shot anyway and while not being the best photo I've ever taken, it's really not so bad. So do you consider this as a mission accomplished? For reference, here's a photo that I took in 2020 which is the closest alignment that I got from this area and I was hoping to take a better shot from this year but it's okay. Just goes to show that you really have to come back over and over again sometimes for a subject. So why don't you click on this video where I stuck to one single subject for five continuous days as a challenge and show you the importance of doing so. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.